I'm John O. Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to look at how to reverse audio. Before we go any further, let's just hear the track we're going to be working on. And in particular, let's listen to the melody, this final last track at the bottom of the arrangement, which is the part that we're going to be reversing. Okay, so the first thing to say about reversing audio is, as you might expect, a file needs to be audio in order for it to be reversible. And at the moment, everything with my project is running as a MIDI region. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is to turn my melody into audio. And there are actually two separate ways that we can do this. So let's look at both so you have that option available to you. I'm going to solo the melody so we can hear it clearly. And what I'm also going to do is to draw a cycle around the part that I want to bounce. I'm actually going to um, create a little bit of a space at the beginning of this audio file and make sure that I'm leaving a little bit of um, time at the end as well, just to capture any tails within uh, an individual note. It doesn't matter if I bounce too much. I don't want to be chopping any note off prematurely. So I've created a cycle region. And then what I'm going to do is to think a little bit about how exactly I want this sound to be captured. Now, if we look in the bottom right hand corner, what we can see is that I've got an EQ and a reverb on this sound. And at the moment, the first way in which we're going to capture this um, MIDI region as an audio file, if I'm not careful, those effects are going to be captured as part of what we call a bounce. They're going to be printed onto the audio file. Now, that might not matter. I might want those effects to be part of it, but I do need to think about that. Would it be better to have a dry original sound or an affected one? That's something I have to decide for myself. I'm actually going to print the effect on this particular sound in this instance. But I also need to look a little bit carefully at the output channel that I'm monitoring through as well. I've actually got a little chain of effects happening here as well. And again, these are going to be captured permanently as part of this conversion to audio process unless I bypass these effects or turn them off altogether. Now I can bypass them very easily. On the left hand side of each individual plugin, I've got an opportunity to turn it off by clicking its power light. And equally, I can actually just stripe through any effect just in one process by dragging down and all of those will be bypassed, which means that they now aren't active and won't be captured as part of what we call a bounce. So what I'm going to do next is actually press this bounce button down here in the bottom right hand corner of the output channel. And that's going to bring up this window, which is asking me what sort of a file do I want to create? And I want a PCM full frequency WAV file. And also the other crucial details here are, I want to add it to the project of my track so that not only am I creating the audio file, but it's going to be in my logic project ready for me to work with straight away. And I've got a choice of whether or not I'm going to capture this in real time, which means I'll hear the melody as it bounces down or offline, which means it will just fly through and do that very quickly. I'm going to select this option. And when I press OK, Logic's going to give me an opportunity to say, what do I want this file to be called? So I'm going to call this uh, reverse melody and we'll just press bounce. And what will happen now is that Logic's going to fly through this process and already it's captured that audio for me. And because I selected the option to add it to project, up in the top right hand corner, I can open up the browser and here is that audio file within this particular project ready for me to use. And if I want to work this way, I can then drag this file to the point at which I started my bounce. Remember that was in bar one. So I can see straight away that when I put it at the beginning of bar one, I can see that the waveform for this display matches up with the MIDI that's created this file in the first place. So that's the first way in which I'm in a position to turn this MIDI file into audio using a bounce function in the output channel. But what I'm actually going to do is to show the other way as well. So I'm going to remove this track. I'm going to actually get rid of the track entirely, not just the region. I'm going to close the browser display and we're back pretty much to where we started, except that I am going to reinstate the effects in the output channel as well. Now, the other way in which I can create audio from MIDI is to use bounce in place. And that's selectable by control clicking the uh, region here. And bounce in place is the option at the top of my uh, list of options here. If for any reason it's not available to you directly, you'll find it in bounce and join, which is here. Either way, select bounce in place. And this time a region, uh, a dialog box will pop up asking you, firstly, what do you want to call this? I'm going to call it melody reversed. 
And I've then got a series of options available to me to decide exactly how I'm going to create um, uh, an audio file from this particular MIDI region. I'm going to select for now that I want to mute the original uh, region, which is going to create this audio file for me. And I'm also going to bypass the effect plugins. And what that does immediately is to make sure that instead of capturing those as part of this audio file, they'll be added to the new audio track that I'm going to create. So when I press OK, Logic's going to fly through and very quickly create a very similar looking waveform to the one that we had a moment ago. But crucially, this time I haven't had to bypass any effects plugins, and you can see that the effects from the original track are now added to this audio uh, track as well. So I've now got a, hopefully, perfect replica of the melody, but this time playing back as audio. Okay, so that's working really nicely. So, how do we go about the process of actually reversing this audio now that we have an audio file? Well, again, I'm gonna keep things soloed for now so we can hear this really clearly. And what I'm going to do is to double click on this um, region, this audio region. And what this is going to do is to automatically launch the editor, the audio editor um, that's uh, within Logic here. Now you might find that by default, the track view is the one that you're seeing first. And if that's the case, no problem, but it's actually the file option we're going to need in order to have access to these menus of options. And within functions, we'll find that one of those is reverse, which is here. And when I select that option, all of this file is going to turn round and play backwards. Okay, let's hear that in context by unsoloing this track and we'll hear all of the others. And I'm actually going to unmute the original melody as well so that we can hear these two things playing side by side. Okay, now that's working really nicely, but it's working nicely because I've got quite an ambient atmospheric piece. Actually, I've got a bit of a problem in terms of the way that this file has been reversed relative to the original melody, and you can probably spot that. If we think about it, because I've actually reversed this entire file, the note here at the beginning of the melody, its reversed counterpart, if you like, is all the way over here because the beginning has become the end. And similarly, the last notes, reverse is all the way over here. It's only right in the middle here where we've actually got anything close to a relationship where the original note and its reversed version are side by side. And what I'd rather do is have a series of reversed notes that are in the same position as the melody notes so that they can actually form a more meaningful relationship. So even though we've got this nice kind of ambient effect here, it's not quite what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click again to reopen the editor. I'm going to come back to file and I'm going to go to functions and I'm going to go to reverse. And of course, what that means is I've just reversed the reverse. So I'm now back to where I started. All the notes are back in the positions they were before. And this time I'm going to be a little bit more careful about how I um, work with this um, audio region. I'm going to make things a little bit bigger so I can see them a bit more clearly. I can see the MIDI notes here and I can see the audio files that correspond to them and I can see that they're actually perfectly locked together as you'd expect them to be. And this time I'm going to press T to bring up the toolbar and select the scissors tool. And this time I'm going to preserve those relationships by clicking to chop up this audio file every time one note gives way to the next. So I'm literally just going through, looking at both the waveforms and the MIDI at the same time, and I'm making sure that I only create a chop where one note becomes the next. Okay, so now what I've done is I've chopped up my file and all of these slices are still relative to their MIDI note positions. And what that means is if I go back to the pointer tool and if I reopen the audio editor and I come back to reverse, this time as I go through slice by slice, each note will retain its position in the track relative to the MIDI. In other words, we should hear in a moment the MIDI note playing the melody line forwards at the same time that these reversed audio, audio slices then produce a kind of ghostly reversed echo of each note um, afterwards. 
So we can just go through one at a time, reverse these slices, and we should hear exactly that effect. So I'm going to solo both the melody and the melody reversed, and we're going to run these two things side by side. And now the original melody note should be followed by an echo of itself at the same pitch. And that's working really nicely, and of course it makes more musical sense. Now, you may have spotted another problem, which of course is that even though the piano is a nice soft sound, it still has this kind of aggressive start point. It has a really fast attack to produce these notes. And of course, in the MIDI version of the notes, we want that. We want that nice sharp attack so that the melody sounds like it's in time and each note is clearly defined. In the reverses, maybe we want that a bit less. If we listen to this last note, we'll hear it really clearly. We get this nice note, it's tailing away, the reverse comes along, and it ends with this kind of splodge as the attack of the note is now at the end. Let's hear that right at the end here. Okay, now I want to make these splodges slightly less aggressive. I don't want all of that attack to happen at the end of the note. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these regions, and I'm going to just zoom in a little bit so that I can take one sixteenth note or a semiquaver off the end of the length of each of these files. And what that's going to do is to just get rid of those attacks. Now that's fine, except that now the reverses are going to finish a little bit early. I want them to finish as these notes give way to the next one. So having made all of them a little bit shorter, I'm then going to just move all of them along by one sixteenth note so that they now end where they did before. And that's going to be great. I think that's going to be a little bit softer. Now the only issue now that I've created is that as those audio files end, it's possible that they will slightly click. So what I'm going to do is to add a tiny fade out of maybe 20 milliseconds over here on the left hand side, and I'm going to do the same thing from a fade in point of view for some of the shorter audio slices. And what that should mean is that we don't get any nasty clicks at the start or end of any of those slices. And I think that's going to sound a little bit less musical and without that kind of splodge at the end. Let's hear those two sounds side by side. And that's sounding great, much more natural, very subtle, and really nice and atmospheric. And in the context of the piece, I think that will sound really nice too. Let's have a listen to the whole thing. last note we've got this nice sort of subtle ending now. So in this video we've looked at a number of things. The first thing we've done is we've discovered there are two ways of creating audio from a MIDI region, bounce in place and using the bounce command in the output channel. And then once we've actually got an audio file, what we've really done here is to focus on what happens when we reverse sounds, either taking entire audio files and turning them all around, or chopping to make much more selection-based reverse slices which make more musical sense in the context of a piece like this.